This is the Vivo Barefoot Tracker Winter SG Mark II, a true barefoot hiking boot. These things have got incredible flexibility in the sole. They give heaps of ground fill and they're marketed as Vivo's best-selling tracker winter boot updated for cold winter environments and snow. These are fully waterproof, they're fully insulated, they're durable, and all of that has been done in a way that shouldn't sacrifice barefoot flexibility and feeling, which if you haven't tried yet, you are 100% missing out. Now, having owned and abused the Mark I version of these boots pretty relentlessly from riding them across the Sahara Desert on a monkey bike to summiting countless mountains all over the world, and I have no issue telling you that the Mark II has some big boots to fill, and I've already broken them. <laughs> Welcome to BSP. <laughs> I'll take it back. <laughs> now, if you watch the channel on the regular, you'll know that we take our reviews pretty seriously. We want to make sure that whenever you open your wallet, it's in a product you can trust, particularly when you're taking the dive into barefoot shoes, and the Tracker Winters are no exception. So in addition to the general testing that we're going to do today, checking waterproofing, abrasion resistance, and thermal properties with this here temperature gun, we've also subjected these boots to a 30 kilometer heavy packed height on a freezing cold, soaking wet night in the Lake District. But for today's testing, we're here back down at the stream. The temperature is hovering around about negative eight degrees and the water temperature is pretty cold. So we've got everything we need to give these boots a run for their money. But first I need to address the elephant in the room. Why is there now super glue holding my almost new $270 boots together? Well, Vivo alternates between three grips for their outdoor line. The firm ground outsole for hard wearing surfaces. Think of them like the all terrain tires you put on your car that you drive to work work, but also off-road on the weekends. The ESC, which is both very grippy and hard wearing, very similar to aggressive off-roading tires. And then these, the soft ground, which has a very spread out tread pattern that works great on loose surfaces. Think of them like very specific paddle tires that you see on dune buddy. Now, when I tested these boots earlier in the year, there wasn't any snow on the ground. And a lot of what we were walking over was very hard, sharp rock. Definitely not the soft ground that these boots are designed for. As a barefoot shoe, they are much more flexible and pliable than normal hiking boots. And that's amazing because you feel so much more engaged in your environment as you're moving through it. But with that extra flexibility, I managed to get the boot wedged into a gap in a rock when I was arsing around. And when I pulled my foot out, I separated some of the thin barefoot sole from the rand that protects the upper. Fortunately, I spotted it very quickly and I was able to repair it in the field with some very basic kit that I carry in my hiking pack. But what do you think? Is it my fault for wearing them in the wrong environment or is it unacceptable for such expensive boots to break? Let me know in the comment section. Fortunately, my repair is still holding up. So we're gonna run them through three different tests today. First, we're gonna assess some abrasion to see if the general wear and tear that you're likely to pick up while you're hiking is gonna diminish the finish or effectiveness of these boots. To do that, we're gonna use these logs over here as a scratching post. So let's get into it. So for this one, we're going to do 30 seconds on the outside of the ram, 30 seconds on the front, and 30 seconds on the heel. We're going to start that time in three, two, one. There we go, 90 seconds, front, side, and back. We're going to go give the boots a little wash off, and let's have a look. So we've given these boots a wash off in the stream. And as you might expect with a boot that actually has a rand wrapped all the way around it, there's literally zero damage to the boots. There's a little bit of light scuffing on the rubber and obviously a little bit of color transfer from the tree onto the boots themselves. But otherwise they're in brilliant shape. The leather I managed to get onto by really angling my foot over and trying to drag it up and down. That's not taking any abuse whatsoever. This is wild hide leather. Um, it's really hard wearing. I've never had a problem with any of it. It's also really nice and flexible as well. It gives the boots a lot of its flexibility characteristics. I think the part of the boot that fared the best from the abrasion resistance was actually the heel. The way that this heel sticks out a little bit more than the rest of the boot means that your Achilles and your ankle are really, really well protected. The rubber takes the majority of the abuse and having these sharp lugs on the back of the boot actually provides you with a lot of traction when you're walking downhill. 
So I would have no issue slamming these boots heel first into soft ground surfaces or just generally smashing them into rocks or logs or anything like that. Some other nice features on the boot that are well worth talking about is the quality of the fasteners that are on here. These, I believe, are a magnesium aluminium mix. I might be wrong about that. I'll let you know down here. The laces, although not textured, are incredibly grippy. I've not had an issue with them coming undone. And also for the rest of the boot, we've got nice touches like this felt inner that provides a lot of thermal protection. There's thermal insoles on the inside, as well as a nice sweat wicking fabric on the inside of the leather section, which helps you keep your feet temperature really nice and controlled. The next two tests look at the waterproofing and thermal properties. And we're gonna run through both of those simultaneously. So I figure that for the thermal testing, the way that we're gonna do it is gonna be two parts. One, I'm gonna be getting in that stream, but two, we're gonna counter that with a waterproof test as well. And for that, I'm gonna be using some tissue paper. I'm gonna wrap it around my foot. And if the tissue paper changes color, that lets us know that there's water coming in. But before we do that, I need to take a control reading that lets us know my current foot temperature. And to make sure this is a pure test, I have worn just ordinary trail socks. They're actually in GG5 finger socks because I'm doing a best barefoot sock review soon. Okay, my feet are currently 10.5-ish degrees. So that is our baseline. When we get out of the water, we want them to be over 10 degrees, ideally. I've never tissue papered my foot before. So this is a, a new experience for all of us. Now, whatever happens, I cannot drop this. Stay. Uh. It's so cold that my camera battery keeps dying, so I'm going to have to apologize and use my phone from now on. But we have successfully got the tissue paper into the boots. The next part is to get in that stream over there. We're going to be able to tell the thermal properties of the shoes and their water resistance once they're done. I know that there's definitely some water coming in them. I turned up streams and I just felt that water coming up over the tongue and it went straight down. It's not a waterproofing issue per se. I just wasn't paying enough attention, but we're going to take the boots off. We're going to take a look at how they fared. I'm going to check the temperature of my feet as well. So bear with me. Okay, first thing that we need to test is the thermal properties of the boot. When we first tested, it was sitting at about 10 and a half degrees. And now... Surely not. So my foot's actually warmer now. Check this out. 11 degrees. That, that I did not expect. The big question though is how about the waterproofing? The left boot is the one that I repaired. You can just about make out the super glue that I used to piece the sole back together there. And the answer to that question is, A little bit. So you can just see on the tissue paper there, if the wind stops blowing, a little bit of dampness. That's actually looking like it's come up over the lip here. Now, I think I did that on both shoes. I slightly overestimated how high that waterproofing went. I was under the impression it came right up to the bottom of this track of winter line. But when I took the boots off, you can see when this little piece of leather folds down, it actually drops below this third eyelet. Now, I was in the water up to that third eyelet, so that's probably my fault, but the rest of the boot looked great. Now, I know for a fact on this right side, I stepped too deep. And if we look at the tongue on the boot just here, you can actually see that moisture riding up the tongue and it just went straight down into my foot. So expectedly, we've got quite a lot of dampness. The tissue paper is actually sodden from where that ice cold water went up and over my foot. I'm gonna put that down to user error on my part. I was under the impression that the waterproofing went much higher up than it did, but as long as you're aware that it's the third eyelet where you'll be protected up until, then you should be absolutely fine. And as for the thermal, I'm genuinely taken aback by the fact my feet were warmer coming out of that ice cold water than they were when I first got in. So. Let's recap everything. Should you be running off and investing in these very expensive, very good looking barefoot hiking boots? Well, for a first pair, unless you live in a very cold climate where it often snows, you'd probably be better off with a more general boot like the Tracker Forest ESC or something like the Primus Trail FG, both of which are highly capable and highly versatile shoes. If however, you are a barefoot veteran or someone that spends a lot of time in soft ground environments, then these boots would be perfect. Now they are not as versatile as other models in Vivo's lineup, but 
when you use them where they're designed to be used, these are phenomenal boots. The grip is exceptional. The thermal and water resistance are also extremely, extremely impressive. And the only thing that I can imagine Vivo ever doing to improve these boots further would be cracking the puzzle of crampon compatible barefoot boots. Now, I know that that's an enigma, but potentially having a removable insert that adds the stiffness needed for crampons would open the use case of these boots right up. There's been several times I've had to switch from my preferred barefoot boots to traditional hiking boots in order to summit a mountain safely with crampons and to be able to enjoy both the ascent and summit in the same pair frankly would be a dream do you agree jump in the comments section down below and let me know as always thank you for watching the channel here is the video on why you need to try barefoot shoes and this is the full testing video that we did prior to this review i'll see you again soon